Have you or a loved one experienced heart failure and had to go to the hospital only later to return again? Well, Qualadime's Community of Care Initiative is helping those very patients avoid that scenario. Joining me now is Ann Elwell, Qualadime Director of Quality Improvement and Consulting Services, and Dr. Howard Dubin from Mid-State Medical Center. Welcome to you both. Thank you for inviting us. First, let's talk to you, Ann. What is exactly Qualadime? What is it about, and what is Community of Care Initiative? Qualadime is a health services research and consulting company. We are also the quality improvement organization for the state of Connecticut. That means we are charged with overseeing the care provided to the half a million Medicare beneficiaries. And Communities of Care is an initiative, a voluntary initiative that we started about a year ago where we have hospitals working with their nursing home, home care physician, and other health care providers to decrease avoidable readmissions to the hospital for patients with heart failure. How big of a problem is this, Dr. Dubin? Unfortunately, it's a very large problem throughout the nation and through the state of Connecticut. Evidence suggests that if you're admitted to a hospital for a chronic disease like congestive heart failure, you have a one in five chance of being readmitted within 30 days for recurrent care. It also costs upwards of $17 billion during the course of the year. Why is that happening? A large part of this is an opportunity to re-engineer the process of discharge from the hospital setting throughout the healthcare continuum. Unfortunately, we're currently in a fragmented system where we're focused on hospital-based discharges. We need to understand the process is a continuum through hospital, home care, nursing care, primary care offices, and specialty care. So it's a group involvement. So how does it all work? Well, we started out with four what we call communities, and those are acute care hospitals and the nursing homes, home care, physicians, everyone they work with, they get together and they look at what are we doing now, what can we do better. So you actually have discussions and you look through statistics, Dr. Dubin? The opportunities for all of us in the multidisciplinary field to get together. The discharge process is a very variable process throughout all of the organizations. And what we're looking to do is standardize the process so we all share the same elements, the same discussion, the same information that we can process through the different care. We recognize that there are probably three major points of failure that we all need to work through. One of them is the process called med reconciliation, which is the opportunity for the patients to understand their medications and some of the side effects and some of the actions, as well as the importance of knowing those medications and bringing it to all of their caregivers. The second is the opportunity to have a follow-up visit post-discharge with their primary care office or their specialty practice. In the hospital setting, they often go from a very intensive environment of care to one when they go home where there's fewer people to care for them. And the third, and probably the most important, is for the patients to understand that this is a chronic disease process with ups and downs. And they need to understand what to watch for and how to prevent some of these things from getting worse so that they can take care of themselves before they get bad enough to have to go back to the hospital to be readmitted. So the patient himself or herself really takes a big role in this as well. Absolutely. Um, patient education, patient and family education is critical. We actually are working on a set of videos with the University of Connecticut that we are going to offer statewide and perhaps nationally so that patients will learn in a standard way what they need to do. So if you leave the hospital today and go to the nursing home tomorrow, the information is the same, the language is the same, it follows you through all the way to home care, to your physician, so you're hearing the same message so there's no confusion. It's about communication. What's the biggest, you said there were several mistakes there, challenges I should say is what you mentioned, but what is the biggest thing that you, needs, you think needs to be overcome? Well, I think the largest challenge is there's a paradigm shift here. For a large time, we've considered the discharge process a hospital problem. It's a continuum problem. The patient who leaves the hospital often goes on to another care setting, and we need to make sure that the information is transferred to those care settings in a timely and efficient manner. So we're talking possibly electronic health records here? Absolutely. Electronic health records are part of the solution. They're not the only solution, but they're an opportunity to standardize the process to make the information available at point of care so that wherever the patient or healthcare member or family member enters the system, the information is available in real time. How close are we in developing this? Uh, we ha are having an initiative now because of the um, 
the health care reform. So we are working with hospitals statewide, working with hospitals and physicians to implement electronic health record. It's a slow process, but uh, we're getting there. This is just one of the solutions. What are the other solutions that you're looking at as Cur well? Currently, it's standardizing the information that goes with the patient from setting to setting. Without that information, patients are going to end up back in the hospital. We've heard from all the communities they want to do this. So we formed a transfer of information committee made up of folks from around the state, and we're hoping to standardize that with Dr. Dubin. He is leading the charge. Oftentimes, though, this is such an overwhelming task for the patient. If you don't have an advocate speaking for yourself, it's very difficult. Well, part of this process is identifying the different multidisciplinary roles that are involved in the process, having them all at the table to understand what information needs to be created and needs to be transferred. It's also an opportunity for us to recognize it's not just the patient, it's the patient and their family and their home health care team that's involved. That's right, and the families need to be involved because they need to understand what, what, what's going on here as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we talked about how unique this program is for Connecticut, but really for, for the entire country. Uh, people are working on what we call transitions of care in multiple areas around the country, multiple projects. But I think what's unique about this one is we're bringing the individual communities together. And I think we're working at the local level. So I, I think it is, it is somewhat unique. And how do you think this will impact the cost of health care? Well, I think the opportunity here of having each health care partner be able to present what it is they need to take care of patients that are entrusted to their care will help reduce some of the redundancy, some of the duplicate testing, and just create a better flow for information, which should promote a better quality of care and a more timely care at each level. And I, I think that one of the major things that we're going to do here, we hope, is the, the um, interventions that we're using, follow-up appointments, etc. they can be used for multiple conditions beyond heart failure. And what we're really trying to do is keep people at home. That's where they want to be. That's where they should be. We want to improve their quality of life and the quality of care that they get. So basically, you're trying to address a current gap in our health care system. And it has been going on for, for a year now. Overall, how's it going? It's going great. We started out, as I said, with four communities. These were volunteer, everyone, and now we're up to 14. And we have Doctor's Days coming up that uh, I know I was a part of just a few weeks ago. And Ann, tell, tell more people about what that's about. Well, what we do on a quarterly basis, Qualidime and all of its partners get together. And as we've gone around to different communities, we understand themes that, that are common to everyone. We bring everyone together to discuss them so that we can work on them around the state to improve the care provided to and patients. And the information is right there on the screen. It's uh, News Aid's Doctor's Days, February 25th from 4 to 8 p.m. You're going to learn more about this initiative. We'll be talking about it, two-minute uh, interviews within the hour. So it's going to be just a lot of information people really need to try to understand because this is truly all about the quality of patient care. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for more information about Qualidime, right there is the information for you, www.qualidime.org. The phone number 860-632-2008. Dr. Dubin, thank you for being with us. Thank you for inviting us.